Hey everybody, welcome to another episode on the AI Guide where we focus on the human impact of AI, how it will affect you. So, second big news last week, just like the last video, this is big news. German industry proposes automated driving verification and validation standard. This will change how quickly autonomous driving is adopted. So check this out. Project leaders Bosch and BMW, along with their German automotive industry partners, have revealed the results of the verification and validation methods, they call it VVM, project to develop the world's first structured verification of safety standards for automated vehicles in an urban environment. So this is big. So in a prior video, I said, Germany and a little bit in England were the first two places in the world to approve level four autonomy, but only in very, very specific circumstances, meaning on the Autobahn in Germany and on one freeway in the UK. But this is wholly different. You'll see why in a second. The German government is playing a significant role in supporting the industry's efforts. In June of 2017, its Act on Automated Driving became law, changing the rights and duties of drivers during the automated driving phase. SAE Level 3 automated systems were allowed to assume the driving task if certain conditions were met. With the Act on Autonomous Driving in 2021, which was an update to the 2017 one, the government established the regulatory framework for autonomous motor vehicles adhering to SAE Level 4 guidelines where allowed to operate in regular public road transport in determined operational areas across Germany. With the technical details ironed out to allow vehicles to be registered and operated on roads in 2022. So that's why SAE Level 4 vehicles were first of anywhere in the world authorized to be on public roads in Germany and right after that in the UK because of this regulatory framework. And this that we're talking about is the next evolution. VVM project leaders say that expanding the use of automated driving systems to other scenarios, such as urban traffic, means that the vehicle and system become much more complex and subject to far stricter requirements. This explains the need for suitable verification and validation methods, which was the focus of the project. And I'm gonna talk about the real world impact of what uh, this has done related to something else big in the news two or three weeks ago. The project's methodological approach is said to be the world's first standard to take other industrial processes into account, underscoring the German automotive industry's desire for a pioneering role in automotive driving. So what they did with this standard is look across the entire automotive supply chain, which is extensive. In the automaking world, there's OEMs, original equipment manufacturers like BMW, Mercedes, Tesla, Ford, GM, etc. Below that are tier ones, which directly supply the OEMs. Below the tier ones are tier two, which supply the components of certain systems to the tier ones, which then make bigger components and ship them to the OEMs. And then below the tier twos are all the individual suppliers that make individual parts of which there's thousands or tens of thousands. Pedestrian, cyclist, motorized two-wheelers, intersections with limited visibility. One of the biggest challenges for automated driving systems is coping with traffic in an urban environment, which is characterized by a huge volume of road users, traffic light systems, traffic signs, and vehicles, said Roland Galvis, technical expert and project leader at Bosch, one of the two project leaders of this effort. For future vehicles to be able to handle even extremely rare scenarios, that's something that is talked about in the press constantly about automated, automated vehicles. They will need comprehensible structures and processes that not only enable the safe operation of a system 
in these exceptional situations, but can also verify that maneuvering is done safely. In addition to compliance with regulations, the guiding principle behind the German automotive industry's work is not only to get technical progress onto the roads as quickly as possible, but also to provide safe vehicles and systems that can be relied on at all times, he said. I'm going to make a bunch of clarifying comments in just a minute. The models developed here make it possible for the first time to provide all automakers with the same structures for the verification and validation of automated driving systems in urban areas, explained Dr. Helmut Schittenhelm, or Scheitenhelm, a BVM project coordinator and manager of safety performance for driver assistance and safety systems at Mercedes-Benz. So those are called ADAS systems. We've talked about that many times before. This may then lead to industry-wide standards that could make road traffic even safer for all road users. Again, more comments coming in a second. Using the Act on Autonomous Driving as a regulation template, Germany is taking great interest in creating overarching rules and advocating for evolving the legal framework at the EU and UN levels. Thanks to a German initiative, Level 3 ALKS, Automated Lane Keeping Systems, up to a speed of 37 miles per hour on roadways, which may be used in traffic jams, has been adopted already at the UN level. We are aiming to change the legal system to allow for speeds of up to 80 miles an hour and enable it to perform lane changes. So what does this all mean? Like always, simplifying all this and what's the human impact? So simply what all this means is a couple of things. Very shortly, because of this, there will be global standards for level four dry, autonomous driving in urban environments. That is a game changer. Once everyone agrees on exactly what the rules are that you have to meet to get certification for your level four vehicle, it levels the playing field globally and dramatically speeds up level four adoption. So this is huge. This is actually a really huge thing. The other thing this means is that the Germans have previously successfully led the EU and the UN adopting standards. That'll happen again. And the US is then highly likely to adopt those standards. So the EU and the US are two of the biggest markets in the world for any kind of vehicle. But for autonomous vehicles, uh, the big three will be US, EU, China. And so this is really big for that reason. Now, what is the human impact? This means that for folks like you and me, level four autonomy will be here by 2025, as I have previously predicted. And let me relate all this to something that was in the news and all over the news just two or three weeks ago. You may remember that Chevy Cruze had their autonomous license revoked, not only in San Francisco, but in California, for exactly one of the situations they talk about in this article, these exceptionally rare circumstances where something freaky happens and an accident is caused. So what happened with the cruise? Just to remind you, the first thing is a Chevy cruise drove off into a big hole in the road that had been dug by construction crews because the vehicle didn't recognize that that striped barrier meant there was a big hole in the road. Now that was a few years ago. So in fairness to Chevy cruise, that was not recent. The thing that was the immediate cause of Cruz's license getting revoked was a hit and run human driver in San Francisco ran over this poor woman in a crosswalk. She flew up over the human dr driven car and came down landing on the road right in front of the Chevy Cruz, which then did not have time to react 
and ran over the poor woman a second time and dragged her uh, 20 feet or so while the vehicle slammed on the brakes. All of that is not why Chevy Cruz had their license revoked in California. It was because they withheld initially information from the California DMV and Public Utilities Commission, which is a no-no. You don't do that. Full transparency. But let's get back to these events that are these exceptionally rare instances of traffic accidents. So I did a separate video recently on an insurance industry study by the very top companies in the insurance in industry that conclusively proved that automated vehicles are far, far, far safer than human beings. Far safer. 78% fewer accidents than human drivers. That is massive. But what the media has been going on and on and on about is these exceptional circumstances that are freak things. These standards directly address that. Therefore, once the standards are officially approved and in place, any manufacturer can test their vehicles against these standards and get them certified, even for these freak accidents. Then there is no logical justification against spreading fully automated vehicles in all urban environments. So right now, hands-free driving only on freeways. These are the standards that will go global, that will allow it in urban areas, and then we'll see it everywhere, even though here in the U.S. and some, a few other places, we're already seeing it through Waymo here in the U.S., now in about six or eight cities. So it's already happening, but once you comply with these standards, anyone can put an autonomous vehicle on the road. So this is big, big, big news. Didn't seem like it at first glance, but once I digested it, this is big news. Look forward to robo-taxis everywhere in a few years. So thanks so much. Please like, subscribe, and share. Now that we're over a thousand, please share these videos. Help me spread the word. Really appreciate it. Also, please support me on Patreon. It's the only way I can do other things like the TED AI I went to. I will do continue to do that event each year, uh, but there's so many more events out there that are happening every month that I could start going to, but I can't do any of that without your support. So I really would appreciate your support. Please support me. Really appreciate it. Take care. Bye.